Okay, here we are like two days later after feeding my starter and it's still not quite falling. This is what happens when it's cooler temperatures, just so you know. So I'm going to start my bread. Other things got in the way. So I start with my scale, turn it on. I set my bowl on there and then tear it out, zero it out. There you go. Then I like to put my water in first. Now, I told you I have my little cheat sheet right here when I start my sandwich bread so i double this and it's, i don't know you can see it's messed up i should probably rewrite it but i know what it is <laughs> so i'm going to start with 650 grams of warm water okay because it's so cold in my house i will do warm water probably a little bit hotter than normal especially because my metal bowl is going to be cold so this will kind of help it so there i go just Adding a little bit, there you go, 650. I just did a whole thing pouring my starter in here, telling you all sorts of interesting, fun stuff, and I didn't record it. So 250 grams of active bubbly starter. You know it's active and bubbly when it floats. Do you see, that's why I add my water first. I like to put my water in here first. Plus, I don't want all my starter stuck to my bowl when I, start, when I mix it up, which probably it wouldn't, but whatever. I want it floating in the water. And then what I do is I take it off. And you can see I did a little extra. I don't mind if I do a little extra on my starter. And here's what's left in there. I'll scrape that down. I'll probably put it in a new jar and clean it. I take it off my scale to dough whisk it. You can use a fork, but just kind of incorporate it. You see how stretchy that starter is? So good. But what I was saying is two days later, because my house is so cold, it slowed how fast it's getting hungry, how fast it rises, and how fast, like, slow down how fast it falls. So there we go, it starts. Okay, it kind of looks milky like that. Zero out my scale again. And now I'm gonna add in 24 grams of oil. You can use olive oil. I'm using avocado oil. And there we go was not sucking it up. I love this little dispenser, it makes it easy. And just watch on the scale till I get to 24. Now this is where you're gonna see why I love using a scale instead of measurements. Have you ever tried to measure honey and try and scrape it all out of the tablespoon or whatever? So 24 grams of honey, again, I'm not I don't worry about it being perfect. I just try to get as close as I can, especially because hi, I'm just trying to, oops, so I'm gonna go over a tiny bit. Well, there we go. That's how it is. These are the two additions to sourdough bread when I'm making sandwich sourdough. I want it super soft. So the 24 grams of honey and the 24 grams of olive oil are just enough to do that. So it's a really soft sourdough sandwich bread. Okay, time to add the flour. I have to add a thousand grams of flour and I've got these rad containers that I got during lockdown. I had to buy other flour, but this is bread flour now. It's just Lehigh Roller Mills bread flour. So I just scoop it. Yeah, I have a one cup measuring cup in here, but I'm doing it by weight and you're gonna see especially why in a second. All right, another reason I love doing it by weight, I'm adding half bread flour and half kamut flour. So if you're not familiar, or pores and wheat, it's an ancient grain. It's grown in Montana here in the US and the density of it is different from wheat flour. So I'm weighing it and I don't have to worry about, yeah, I've got a measuring cup there, but I am doing it by weight so that it's not gonna mess with my dough, um, my bread dough. So there we go, come in there. Got it all good to go. And then I will add salt to this and mix it up. I was saying, I was talking about lockdown because of the writing on there. I had gotten whatever I could, so it's not technically um, all-purpose and bleached flour anymore. It's bread flour, but that's why it says that on there because I just got what I could, but I made sure it was unbleached. Okay, most of the time when you make sourdough bread, you wait a while after mixing these ingredients together before you add the salt, but this recipe, you add the salt right now, and it's worked for me. Again, I'm gonna do 24 grams. So I just sprinkle it in there. I don't have to get out a measuring spoon. I just sprinkle it in there. Also, this works well for 
any type of salt. Like I don't always use the same coarsity or I don't know the right word there of salt. Sometimes I use powdered salt. And if I measured that with a spoon by volume versus, you know, a fine salt or a coarse salt, it would be a very different amount of salt in there. So love this method. Okay, at this point, a lot of people mix it by hand. I can't quite do that. I will do my stretch and folds by hand, but mixing it by hand is really hard with still some of the lasting effects I have with my hand and my wrist. So I put it on my KitchenAid with the dough hook and I just start it up. I won't make you listen to it the whole time. There you go. Okay, there we go. It's in my glass bowl. That's what it looks like. It looks really little in there, but it's going to rise. Okay, and then cover it. I've got these wax line or bee wax, these wax lined fabric covers that my sister makes. And I just need to cover it and tuck it under. So you can use whatever. So I've seen some people, Ballerina Farm, she uses a plate that fits perfectly across her um, bowl is genius and I get that mixing in this bowl would probably be ideal but um so I don't dirty up everything but it's okay because I'm going to start a second batch in here it's already messy from making it so I'm going to do another batch while I'm here we're going through bread it's cool enough to turn my oven on for that long now I love the free cold air um, but this is going to take longer if I leave it sitting out like this so I kind of tuck it underneath so it's not sitting on my cold granite but I might set it in my oven all right, I used up basically all my starter. This is what I have left, but I wanna show you something fun. That's all you need. Even if I had nothing there and I just had what was left on the jar, you can feed that. You can feed it. So I'm just gonna feed it. Just feed my jar, 125, see I have my little cheat sheet still, 125 grams of water. And then I will add 140 grams of bread flour. And I'll come back probably tomorrow or later today and show you how it's going. Okay, there you go. She's fed. It looks messy and I probably would have started a new jar and washed this one, except I need all of the yummy bacteria that's in here that I'm feeding. So it's I'm trying to push it down so you can kind of see where it's at and we'll see how well it grows. Let me see if I can show you. It's right about there, way down there. The other thing is if you have a jar of discard in the fridge, which I have, you could add a little bit of your old unfed discard and just feed it. Discard is just unfed starter. So lots of options there. I keep a jar in my fridge of discard and I could pull some from that. I haven't fed it in months. It's just been chilling in the fridge. Um, like I said, my house is cold. So I've got this sitting on just in my oven with all the rest of my stuff, my Dutch oven and all, just with the light on. And I'll just close it up in there. It'll just sit here and that warmth will help it grow as well. Um, starter needs food and warmth that's really it other fun starter tips or sourdough tips with me just let your stuff sit out and dry and then you can just wipe it right off it's easier than trying to remove that sourdough glue same with my bowl i'll just kind of let it sit for a while and then that stuff will scrape off easier when it dries in fact this will start to fall off on my counter but whatever i just wipe it up makes it kind of easy to clean up okay i'm on my third set uh, stretch and fold so sorry you missed the first two but I'm still going to show you what I do so dampen your hands a little bit it makes it easier but I just pull it up from one side stretch it and fold it in turn pull it up from the side stretch it fold it in and you just do this turning the bowl go all the way around this is four loaves so this is a lot I mixed my doughs together that I mixed up separately and then I like to, I don't know why, but I like to flip it. Now I'm going to move this because it is still rising and it's gonna take over this bowl, well it already has. So I'm gonna put it in something bigger. I'll show you what I put in, put it in. All right, I'm putting it in this large container just because I've got so much dough here, but I wanna show you after the first set of stretch and folds, one of my favorite ways to do a stretch and fold is to do, the, I think it's called the coil method. And you like pick it up and you kind of let the both sides fold underneath and then you turn it and do the same thing this way and it's can't really see it there i need to do it after maybe i'll do my next set this way but it gives a really smooth finish so i'll show you on my next stretch and fold how that looks okay hopefully this works so oh yeah 
kind of jiggly. So after I get everything mixed together, every half hour, you just stretch and fold. My house is colder, so I've been kind of doing it a little bit longer than that. During the summer when it's really warm, sometimes it is faster, you know. But you can see like how soft it is. So I'll show you. I just grab underneath the middle. Should I get this? And kind of lift and let those two edges fold underneath. And then turn it. You can kind of see from the side there where they kind of fold it underneath. Same thing on this side. I just kind of let it jiggle down and let it fold underneath. Do it a couple times, two, three, four times. As we do stretch and folds, we're building tension in it so that it doesn't go flat when you bake it. So I'm just building tension. You see that it's kind of hanging and then just drop it down on top of itself. That's it. Now I let it Sometimes you leave it for the three to four hour rise and this is what it does and it pops the lid off. So yay, it rose really well. I might toss it in the fridge overnight because I need to shape it and put it in loaf pans and then let it sit for another two hours in those loaf pans. So I might just knock it down, put the lid on it and put it in the fridge overnight. Then you see all that, the air, the gas, so amazing. Kind of a coil fold. It knocked all the gases out of there, right? I'm gonna put the lid on it, put it in the fridge overnight, and I will shape it tomorrow. See, if I don't feel like doing it tonight, I could put it in loaf pans and then put cover those and put them in the fridge, but I don't feel like doing that. So it's gonna go in there. It's probably going to rise some in the fridge, but the fridge is gonna be cold, so it's gonna slow it down and you get more of a sour, sourdough flavor because it ferments longer when you do that i could leave it in the fridge for probably three days total before baking it and get a really sour sourdough all right i only have two of these nine by i love the nine by five loaf pans so i'm gonna work with half the dough that i made yesterday i'll put the rest of it I'll show you back in the fridge so i've got that in there the longer ferment will give it more of a sour flavor if you like a really mild sourdough then don't do the overnight ferment and bake it you know same day these are very cold since i just pulled them out of the fridge so i am just going to put them on this flour here for a bit and let them warm up just a touch so that it's a little bit easier to laminate and shape and put in those loaf pans with that said if you don't have time to do stretch and folds and you're putting you're going to bake your bread in a loaf pan you don't have to do stretch and folds so um, it just builds up that tension, especially if you're going to put the dough on parchment paper in a Dutch oven, then it won't like slump flat if you're doing your stretch and folds. It builds up that good tension. Okay, it's still fairly cold, so it's not as stretchy as it would be if I left it longer. But this is where I'm saying sourdough is very forgiving. So here's what I'm doing. I am just going to shape it and put it in the pan because that's what I need to do. I, this is what I have time for. In fact, yesterday when I was doing some of my, um, sometimes I get too much flour. Okay, almost every time. And then I can't really shape it as well. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect because it's still gonna fill the pan and all. But if you wanna tuck these ends in, you can kind of squish those in. I don't know it always seems to work out whether I do that or not but also like with my shape and folds yesterday I sometimes it was like or my stretch and folds sometimes it was like an hour instead of half an hour in between those and it's just forgiving okay I'm gonna try and do this from another angle so that my arms aren't in the way or my hands aren't in the way of what I'm doing so I just rolled this one up I'm just popping it in the pan and then I will put, I bought a whole bunch of shower caps, <laughs> these tiny little shower caps on Amazon. And I'll just stretch that over the top of it. It kind of holds some warmth in. And there you go, it's gonna fill the pan. So I'm gonna leave it for about two hours till it fills, or until it fills the pan. All right, so these little, they come like this. <laughs> you just stretch it, kind of stretch it. And it's a shower cap. And I just put it over the top and I'll just let it sit somewhere I kind of lift it I like to lift it up a little bit so it's not stuck to it but anyway there you go it's more forgiving especially if you're putting it in a loaf pan like I said if you're shaping it to make an artisan loaf then 
you have to spend a little more time shaping it so that it's the shape you want. So it'll sit in the middle of the, plant, the pan. So it'll sit in your proofing basket, but also it's gonna sit in your proofing basket, which is also going to help give it some shape too. So uh, I just, I don't want people to be as scared as I was about sourdough. That's why I'm sharing everything I am. I don't love the shape this came out to, the first one I was working on, so I'm gonna do it again. I'll just pull it apart and reshape it. Okay, they are ready to go in the oven. See how they've filled the pans. Had I spent more time shaping them, they'd be smoother on top, but I'm not that picky, so. And with sandwich bread, you don't have to score them. 